What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the TGFA. This is week five. We are going to be against the beautiful Jolteons. Yes, that is another wonderful video game pun for a title. And, uh, let's see. They got some threats. Um, they're doing actually really well. This is another battle for first place. They're actually second place, and, uh, another first place versus second place team. Oh! Oh, I totally forgot to mention. <laughs> I'm not alone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here too. Please yourself. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm back again. Max, hello. Yep, yep. So we got Max yet again. Yeah. And if you guys have not seen it yet, check out the week four battle up against the Golurk Lagans, our rivals, the battle for first place. Holy cow. Yeah, that was a good that battle. Was such, that was such for a good sure. battle. Um, be sure to check that out. That'll be on Max's channel. So um, I've also got a playlist with all the battles and team building in um, on my channel. So you can check it out there, of course, too. And I'll link you to his. But regardless, looking at their team, they got some threats. Uh... I was really kind of shocked at like their team composition, and at first I looked at their team and wasn't too immediately concerned, but when I got into team building, surprisingly difficult. Um, Mega Venusaur is such a monster, we really don't have a lot to hit that outside of like Hoopa and Latios, so that was kind of difficult, and Weavile counters both of those mons super hard. Victini comes in like a wrecking ball and just hits everything hard with that V-Create. Umbreon, super bulky, Guard of War, uh, it's a good fairy. Haxorus, that monstrous attack stat. Um, Kofagrigus, that incredible defense stat. And then the annoying Mummy, which um, really hurts something like Infernape or Scizor, which rely on their ability for a little bit of damage um, out boost, or damage boost. Um, Exploud, Specs, UC, Scyther, it's blindingly fast speed. <laughs> uh, we got Electivire, which is actually one of the bigger threats on their team to our team in particular and even amongst their like PU threats they got stuff like slacking which just uh, hits, slacking like, is a rock. monster yeah uh, so I got a compliment to uh, their team because they have a lot of like good mix of bulk and offense I think they, they did really well in, uh, in that aspect uh, yeah, just they definitely looking at their team. team yeah for sure so but, yeah but anyways first Mon first Pokemon the most obvious mon to bring was Mega Scizor. Looking at their team, Bug Bite hits Mega Venusaur pretty hard, Bullet Punch KOs Weavile, Bug Bite can do some decent damage to Victini, but Bug Bite can also do a ton to Umbreon, BP does a ton to Gardevoir, BP does a ton to Haxorus, um, we don't really do much to Kofagrigus, and like BP can do a lot to Exploud, uh, BP does a lot to Scyther, um, it just does so much to so much of their team. And when you look at our spread, we were running Roost, SD, Bug Bite, and Bullet Punch because we've got a decent amount of HP and defense or HP investment so that we can tank a decent number of hits from a lot of his mons. So like Haxorus or Weavile or um, Guard of War, um, Exploud, we tank a lot of their hits, taking like a decent amount less than 40%. So we can at least SD up on one of them as many of their attacks don't do a KO us and then proceed to KO a lot of his team with a plus two BP or Bug Bite, especially after rocks. So Scizor could be a late game sweeper and is one of our only defensive responses to Haxorus actually. Yeah. Um, it's only real checks on their team are Electivire, which can switch in on BP and outspeed us and KO us with Flamethrower, and go for Grigus, which only takes like 20 something percent from like plus two bug bite. And then, and then takes after away. taking away our technician, d does even less. Yeah. And um, it can Willow Wisp us. So we want to be careful about that. This thing is going to be helpful in taking some hits. Um, early on in the game, we're going to want to pivot around with it and maybe roost to keep it healthy for like a late game sweep potentially. Yep. Um, uh, and then the next mon on our team. Next up is Mr. Clean. Another physical uh, defensive. We love that physical defensive road on Wash. Um, yes, we do. Since the only like fire type they have, and they don't have a lot of like fire type move coverage on their team besides maybe like flamethrower and explode, uh, I thought it is very obvious that they're bringing Victini for Mega Scissor in particular because Mega Scissor is such a big threat. Uh, yeah. So it's good to have a Pokemon that kind of just wins against Victini first of all. Um, because V Crate won't do anything. I don't even think Sen had a. I mean, it takes it takes like forty percent from it. Um, yeah, but then we still, we still take less than half from Abandoned V Crate, which is really nice. Yeah, and then it loses all those stats and everything. Um, it also, I don't know if it really takes care of uh, Electrovire that well, but it also, especially Mantine, which is also pretty as physically defensive. Mantine could take care of M M Mega Scissor because it resists both of their stabs. So having something that's like four times 
Uh, that just easily wins against Mantine, because Mantine can't do anything against us. Uh, Mantine also does pretty well against other mons later on on our team. Um, so having something that really checks that well is really good. We have Will-O-Wisp, so we can burn stuff like Weavile and Scyther, because Scyther is another Pokemon we wall. Um, and we also have Pain Split because, you know, Umbreon is going to wish pass a lot, so being able to um, stay alive on that is very helpful. Um, we also need Volt Switch because Mega Venusaur, you know, it just yeah, comes we in. we don't want that thing getting free switches. Yeah, it just comes in on us and that will be very scary. And Hydro Pump is for stab and such. It doesn't really do a lot, but if, if, if it need be, it's there for Victini and, yeah, if, just for a lot of damage. It's also really helpful for slacking, only taking about half from return, and it makes it so that he can't spam Earthquake. Um, this thing doesn't really help out that much with Haxorus because of Mold Breaker, and it can KO us pretty easily with um, Earthquake. Yeah. But another aspect is that um, Volt Switch, we have to be careful because Electivire has Motor Drive, which means if it gets hit by an electric attack, its speed will increase. And uh, that could be really scary. So we do need to watch out for that in particular. But in general, we're going to be trying to Volt Switch to keep momentum because we're, we don't have a lot of recovery on this team, if any at all, really, and uh, we're going to need to kind of finish it up pretty soon and get opportunities for Mega Scizor to SD once Kofa Grigus is gone. That's kind of like the main game plan. Also, with regards to Mantine, Mega Scizor can beat Mantine 1v1 as long as it doesn't get Skull Burnt, because we only take 22% from Air Slash, and like we could set up like all day on it and eventually we'll k KO it. But um, I keep forgetting it doesn't get Roost as well. Which is, yeah, it doesn't get Roost, so yeah. um, it would only beat us if it Scald Burnt us, yeah. which like obviously would not be great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then the next member of our team is Infernape. Looking at his team, he's got a lot that's weak to fire or fighting, and um, that's just as easy as it gets. Um, our speed is so that we outspeed a Scarf Scyther if necessary. Um, what's really important is that we potentially outspeed a plus one Haxorus so we could potentially revenge kill that. Um, we have Fire Punch to hit Mega Venusaur and stuff like Gardevoir for a 2 hit KO. Um, a lot of what Close Combat doesn't 2 hit KO or Oko, Fire Punch 2 hit KOs. And Flare Blitz doesn't add enough power to make those 2 hit KOs into 1 hit KOs, especially when you consider like the negative side of the recoil too. So, in general, Fire Punch in Close Combat will hit a lot really hard. After Rocks, I think it KO is slacking. Um, it does over half to Electivire. And U-Turn is really nice for Momentum. It's a very standard Choice Scarf set. Like I said, Momentum is going to be very important. So, U-Turn and Volt Switch um, are going to form a nice little core. Uh, as far as the last move goes, not 100% sure what to go for, but one of the few things that re resists both Fire Punch and Close Combat is Victini, so if he does want to potentially bring that in as a switch in, Earthquake it works well, and if he wants to um, potentially take a Close Combat because, you know, Electivire takes two, we can go for Earthquake. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Iron Fist because it boosts that um, Fire Punch, and we don't plan on getting really low on health. Yeah, um, with Flare Blitz, so yeah, Fire Punch just helps with that. Um, the next yeah, mon so. is uh, Magneton. It put in a decent amount of work last week, and I think this week it will do even more work. Uh, we're bringing the choice specs again. Uh, Volt Switch, just for Switch initiative, um, alongside Infernape and um, Mr. Clean, um, which is very helpful. Um, Flash Cannon is there for like, pretty much everything. Like It does so much <laughs> to Weavile, Gardevoir, uh, even Mega Venusaur. Yeah, even Mega Venusaur doesn't appreciate it. Um, Avalug, like everything on our team, kind of destroys Avalug, but that's a detail. Um, yeah. And we also have Hidden Power Ground in case um, Electrovire wants to uh, switch in on us because Electrovire kind of uh, definitely wins against Magneton with Earthquake or even Power Up Punch setting up on that. Right. Um, and we don't want so to we don't give want it. To give that a free switch. Yeah. Or... For sure, uh, and I think how much does it hit a power ground do on switching? I think it does a lot on to electivire. It okos. Yeah, it okos. Okay, that's very good to know. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's not yeah. very. Uh, it's pretty standard from what we brought last week. Just yeah, another. You'll also power. notice that um, we got a ton of HP, ton of bulk. Um, in addition to our special attack, and that's because we wanted as little speed as possible. We actually have a speed reducing nature, and that's so that if we go up against Umbreon, we get our analytic boost, and we actually 2 it KO that with Flash Cannon or Thunderbolt. 
So that's also like a really important aspect, and that allows us to live a couple more hits. Um, nothing really wants to take a flash cannon, and even that includes um, Electivire. But we obviously don't want to give him like that sort of switch priority. Yeah, the only steel resist they have is four times weak to electric, so right. We could just flash cannon <laughs> everything, which is amazing. So, all right, and the uh, the next member of the team is the Great Gozu. Um, we got Hoopa, and it's making its debut here in the league. And we weren't a hundred percent sure what to run with these last two slots. I came up with these four, these first four, and we talked about it, and we were like, "That's good." But what are we thinking about for the last two? And we were thinking we need hazards or hazard removal, and we need something to hit Mega Venusaur super effectively. Um, and so we were thinking, okay, either Latios or Hoopa, and obviously they're both weak to Weavile. Um, but we needed that stab psychic attack to actually like hit Mega Venusaur pretty hard and Hoopa turned out to be the answer. So Shadow Ball hits Kofagrigus really hard and it doesn't need a ton of speed to outspeed things that are relevant. Um, that was Latios' main advantage, it has recovery and it, it outspeeds a lot but um, it doesn't have a lot of bulk um, or at least as much bulk as Hoopa does and doesn't have um, as monstrous of a special attack stat. And so Psyshock hits Mega Venusaur really hard, Shadow Ball um, even does like 25% or so to Weavile, so after a couple rock switchings we can afford to go for that. But Shadow Ball hits everything really hard, and what resists it, Focus Blast decimates. Um, we 2-hit KO Umbreon after rocks with Focus Blast. Obviously we're going to try as hard as we can to avoid having to use Focus Blast because we hate inaccurate moves. Um, and then for like last move coverage, um, Mantine, uh, the only th Mantine and Scissor are the only things that um, Shadow Ball and Psyshock um, wouldn't do more than Thunderbolt 2. So, Thunderbolt it was. As far as the EVs go, it's really complicated. Um, the speed is to outspeed Exploud um, if necessary, and we're Assault Fest because that way we're actually a switch in for Guard of War primarily, and um, we even take a hit from Kofagrigus when we knock it back out with Shadow Ball 65% um, of the time uh, if rocks are up. And yeah. Uh, Special attack is to pick up some important 2-hit KOs on things like Mega Venusaur. We're guaranteed to 2-hit KO it, even if, if it's offensive or defensive, even if it Giga Drains on the turn first turn we Psyshock. Um, we're guaranteed to 2-hit KO it with Psyshock, which is really nice. Um, yeah, that, that's that's just about it, really. Yeah. I, uh... We Oko, Shadow Ball, um, Guard, or we Oko, Guard of War with Shadow Ball after rocks. Um, I think we also... Uh... I'm not sure, but I think we all call a uh, physically defensive Kofagrigus, which is kind of an issue. Uh, uh, yeah, we got a good chance. We do like 86% min. Yeah, uh, so, so just killing that in one hit would be amazing. Yeah. And the final member of our team is a bulky crocodile, which I love using. I love using bulky crocodile. Um, <laughs> because we needed something with hazards. We didn't have a lot with any hazards at the moment, and since our Infernape was Scarf, we couldn't really put that job on him. So a bulky crocodile could do the job uh, with leftovers and intimidate. It also has a uh, taunt, so we actually win 1v1 against Umbreon, uh, for example. And Kofagrigus. And Kofagrigus, yeah, for sure. And also Uxie, but we could just knock off that. Um, this is like one of our only checks to Haxorus as well. Like, we need to keep Scissor healthy to deal with Haxorus, but like, we take less than half from a Life Orb Adamant um, Outrage. Outrage, yeah. Which is really nice because we can knock off on the next turn too. And that'll reduce damage because of the less like life orb output. But yeah. this is one of the only things that can actually switch in on Haxorus. Yeah, Haxorus. And is he doesn't have scary. a ton of um, physical attackers, but it's really nice to have Earthquake for Electivire potentially because we take one Giga Drain or one Ice Punch and um, knock off for Kofagrigus and to get rid of some items, some potential recovery. Taunt helps us beat anything that's slower than us and potentially set up on us or like Wisp us and Stealth Rock because we need our hazards. EV. Spread is typical, max HP, max defense. Yeah. Yeah, pretty standard, like, will keep, but we have a lot of physical walls this time around, or two physical walls and then no special walls, but I think uh, the special walls that, or attackers that they have, we can deal with just with pure offense. Um, Agreed. So, and, like, if we need something to take a special hit, we have Hoopa. Yeah. Yeah. But Because Hoopa is a salt vest, so it can take a lot of hits with that base 130 uh, special defense. Yeah, so some threats for the team. Uh, Pursuit Weavile could be a pain. Um, Electifier is still a monster. We don't have anything with Protect, 
So slacking could get some good damage off, but it also provides an opportunity for us to set up rocks with like Crook, for example, or um, SD up with Scizor, um, or get a Wisp off with like Rotom. So there are opportunities to like set up with it as well. But Mega Venusaur is also a pain, especially if they bring a bulky set with Leech Seed, I think. Um, that could be a bit of a pain. But Mega Venusaur yeah, is always um, a pain, so. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. Uh, you know, they're not giving themselves enough credit, but they're good battlers, and they're in second place for a reason. But anyways, we'll see you guys in the battle. But until then, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.